interesting topic for us to have a little chat about today um, and it's Katie who's with us. So do you want to start, I've just said it's Katie, but do you want to start by introducing yourself, tell us how long you've been here, what your role is, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, so I'm Katie. <laughs> this just feels so a little bit unreal, it's all right, okay. Um, so I've been here seven years but longer I, because... But longer because, of, well, I've been here since I was 10 years old. <laughs> uh, so expex but student as well. Um, I'm assistant faculty leader in PE and faculty research lead. Um, so, yeah, I've spent over half of my life at Beckford Beck School. Oh. So you are Beckford through and through, yeah. breaking and the path. I absolutely love it. Like yeah. a stick of rock, it says Beckford yeah. right through you. Yeah. Wouldn't have oh. it any other way. Oh, perfect. Um, so what are you here? I know you've done, in your time here... I've been your mentor, so I know how much research you've done and, and different topics that you've you've really been passionate about and got and got into. What is it that you're talking to us about today? Um, revision. The words that students hate to hear. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I want to I want to chat about. Real. It's revising. So as the Beckford Lifelong Learners podcast, we always ask what is something that you have learned recently or learn in your time of teaching that you want to share with us first? Yes, yeah, so the thing that I've learned, I've learned a lot of things, <laughs> learned a lot of things, but one of the things that I've really been um, sort of looking into in the last couple of years is that students don't know how to revise. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we almost presume that students know how to do. Yeah, and definitely. we set them. Revised for your assessment. It's next Off week. You Off you go. Yeah. Have you revised? Yes, yes. Brilliant. You revised. I read through my book. Yeah. Hmm. But actually, is what they've done effective? Purposeful. Yeah. Is it purposeful? And is it making the best use of the time? Yeah. Because let's face it, just like us students have a lot of other things they want to be doing with the time. So, ensuring that what they're doing with their time when they are revising is effective. Yeah. So. And I suppose that leads really well onto my next question, which is what are you here to talk to us about today? I know over your time and as part of your role as research lead, you've done you've researched loads of different things, but what is it that you are going to be discussing with us today? Um, the revision programme that yeah. I started. And when I started as faculty research lead, I just started looking into metacognition yes. and students sort of understanding the thought process be behind when they're writing an answer or when they're completing a task, etc. And it was from that research that then made me think about revision yeah. because it's the biggest independent task, task that we yes. set students. And if students aren't doing that effectively, then how can we expect them to assess their thought process through a task effectively? Um, so that's where I sort of thought, right, revision, students, how can we make sure that what they're doing is effective? Yeah. And I think within a couple of days, it turned into a tutor programme. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> and the idea just came, um, I think Nikki approached me in the corridor, actually, um, and just mentioned the idea, and we went with it. Yeah. And now we have a tutor curriculum from year 7 to 13 um, that allows students to build themselves as independent learners and understand key revision strategies. Um, which have now been embedded whole school and are in their ILBs as well. Yeah. So, what does that look like then? So we've got it throughout throughout school. Yeah. What does the typical program look like? I'm a Year Nine tutor, so I know what it looks like in Year Nine. Yeah. How does it build and, and fit in? So in Year Seven and Eight, it's more about students understanding how they learn and how their memory works. So how can they ensure that new information? is taken from their working memory to their long-term memory that they can retain it and what they can be doing at home to help them retain that information yeah. um, and how to make how to be the best version of themselves in the classroom to ensure that what they are learning is going in yes. um, and avoiding the distractions etc but also key points for teachers to look out for as well to ensure that students are on task and not being distracted um, and then in year seven and eight we look um, about the core revision strategies so they're the ones that are embedded into the ILBs and that we want students to be using um, weekly what so, are the core so flashcards yeah mind maps self quizzing and brain dumps they're our four core revision strategies that we build up from year seven with the idea that by the time they get to ele year 11 they've mastered if not experts in those yeah. strategies and they are using them confidently and effectively throughout all their subjects so because they're practicing them every year 
by the time it comes to year 10 and 11, when they're revising for the GCSEs, they're not having to learn something new, a, a new strategy, because they've been practicing them, and it just comes as, as given, really, yeah. to them. Um, and then, as the years go on, um, as they go into year 9 and 10, the programme extends from six sessions a week, uh, from six sessions over half term, to 12, so it's a termly programme yes. from years 9 to nine to 13 um, and that also looks at other things like habit creations that they can do in their own time to help them um, become better independent learners how they can create the right environment when they're working how they can create re revision timetables looking at, at fighting procrastination because it's the thief of time and yes. we all love a bit of procrastination um, but That's how to well, actually you, you need to have that yeah. your desk never put off till tomorrow what you can, can do, do today, today. Yeah. you always had that always had that um, but it's such an easy thing to do. And obviously you're gonna to go to what you want to do mm -hmm. and leave what you don't want to do at the bottom. But you know, it just talks students through the process of that and overcoming. Um, looks at multitasking um, and how we can how we can avoid multitasking. And actually um, read something that was shared on Twitter last week called now our pronunciation's not great. The Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro techniques, this is something new actually. Um, and that is where students work in a 25 minute stint and they set a timer for 25 minutes and they work on that task for 25 minutes and then they have a break for five minutes. So they get up from their desk, yeah. they go and get a drink, go to the toilet, whatever, and then they come back to the desk and they do another 25 minutes, minutes and they work in 25 chunks. minutes chunks. Um, and after four, they call it Pomodoros, which is a 25 minute session of work. After four of those, you'd then increase the break time, so you'd have 15 to 30 minute breaks so that you're taking yourself away from it a bit longer. But that's meant to be a really effective um, revision technique for independent learning because you're keeping the focus high and the time short um, with regular intervals to, to switch off and switch back on. So. Yeah, that's something that the New Year 11 programme is going to include, include includes that's as well. Really, really good. Um, and loads of stuff, you know, like how, how memory works, retrieval. And then when year 10 and 11 come along, we look at some more advanced revision strategies like dual coding, interleaving, spacing, um, retrieval practice. Because we've already got a foundation of core revision yeah. strategies, we can then look at um, making them a little bit more advanced and, and stretching them. So, so that's what is happening in tutor time yes. and as tutors we're going through that with them in their sessions each week. So the students themselves are actually becoming really, really confident with this and I know my tutor group, they now kind of just, when, I, when I'm getting the whiteboard and stuff set up at the start of another session, they can very much independently get their ILBs out and they can crack on with those techniques that we've and that's done. What, that's what we want, we want to be building. Those, the, independence. Those, the independence from that. How can subject teachers then support that process? Like what kind of things can, can we protect in as subject teachers to make sure it links well with what the students are doing in, in tutor time? I think it's again ensuring that when, when you do have an assessment coming up yeah. and you are setting a right, I'd like you to revise for 25 minutes on this topic, is actually setting them a concrete task to do. So students are aware now how to make flashcards. Yes. We know that because it's been delivered through tutor time and it's in their ILBs. Um, so really sort of, when they're setting the task, making it explicit, I want you to follow these five steps that are in your ILBs. Because what I've done is, for the four key strategies, is I've chunked them into five steps, a little bit like the walkthroughs book. Yes. So they're really simple for students to follow from start to finish. Um, and I know for PE, we print that five step on a sticker and put it into their homework booklet so that they refer to that when they're making their yeah. flashcards. I know humanities as well um, do a lot around focusing on a half term of self-quizzing and flashcards and they use that five step process as well so I think it's embedding that into your homework task to make it really clear. Yeah so a clear specific revision task. Yeah. Can, what another? I was listening to you and Sue's having a chat about the um, was it self quizzing? Yeah, it was flash. How did, I was just thinking, oh, we should talk about that. Yeah, how did that? Just remind me of how that looked because I was like, oh my gosh, that's really cool. And yeah. you were so specific that the amount of times you wanted them to yeah, tackle the so questions. I, I did this with my year tens because I asked them to make flashcards. So using the five step process, make flashcards. Um, ten flashcards is how many I wanted them to make. Super specific. Um, 
and then the following week once I checked those flashcards I wanted them to then use those flashcards but I was thinking right how can they evidence that they've used those and how can they evidence that they've used them properly because a pet hate of mine is when students pick up a flashcard and they read the question and they turn it over straight away and go I was going to say that but how do you know that you've not actually allowed your brain to organize that information to understand whether you know it or not so students need to be either saying the answer out loud or writing it down so I thought, right, they can self-quiz using these flashcards. So there was a really clear set of instructions. So they're going to pick up the flashcard, they're going to read the question, and they're going to write the answer down in their homework book. And you made them, you stuck a little envelope in yeah, their book, stuck didn't you? An envelope so in the book. That, that, that those, those flashcards were there. Um, so they've got the envelope with the flashcards in and the instructions. So they pick the flashcard up and they read the question and they write their answer down. And they put the flashcard down, they pick the next one up and they repeat that process for all of the flashcards and then they go back to the first flashcard and they check their answers so they mark them and any question they got wrong they highlight specifically so they know where they've, where they've gone wrong and then I wanted them to do that three times before their homework deadline so I gave them an example of doing it on the 23rd, the 25th and the 26th and they had to put the date in their books of when they did it um, and they should have three sets of answers from these flashcards um, and when I was checking the home learning, it was so nice to see that the students, one, had done it and followed the instructions properly, but over time, they were getting less and less questions wrong. That's perfect. And it was just like, yeah, it was, it was brilliant to see. It was like, this is exactly what I wanted you to get out of it. And when the students see that, they believe it. And they're like, oh, actually, what they're telling us works. Motivating. Yeah, it motivates them. And they're more likely to then continue doing it because they see success. See success. Just and that's say, yeah. what, what motivates everyone is doing something right. So, yeah. So that, I think my key takeaway from this is the students have all the tools. They know what they're mm -hmm. doing. I need to trust trust the process yeah. as a subject teacher yeah. right I want you to do this revision technique yeah. that so be really specific with my revision technique and, and check that revision yeah technique. and when you start you do need to be very specific like <laughs> these instructions there was no chance they're getting wrong because it's step by, by step the by second step. what they needed to do yeah. but once you've done that over time habits it'll become a habit mm -hmm. And you won't need to give them those instructions. You'll just be able to say, self quiz using your flashcards, I need to see evidence three times. And they'll know exactly what they need to do. Brilliant. But you've just got to build those routines. Yeah. And, yeah. It's like anything, isn't yeah. it? Exactly. It sounds really, really good, really positive. And like I say, over time, less onerous on us yeah. as teachers yeah. once we've we get them into the routines. You've just got to be consistent with it first. Yeah. And stick at it, and then it will. So, what do you see that we maybe still need to refine as a school? And um, I think in terms of the revision programme, it's never going to be a finished product. Yep. I don't think anything like no. that that goes on every year is ever a finished product. You can never say, right, that's done, and not touch it, because things change, new research, research comes changes, out, yeah. research changes, ideas change, and you get feedback from staff on what was well, what went well, and what yeah. maybe needs tweaking. Cool. Um, so I think it will always be a refined piece, yeah. a piece of work that we'll need we'll refining, working, and it will always be get this week just so the students get the best out of it as well yeah. because you know times change so it needs to be changing with the and it's different, different from when I was at school here's your revision yeah. guide off you pop well I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so keen to do it because as a student I, w I was very hard working but when I got my assessments back they never really refre reflected the amount of work that I put in yeah. and that's because then what I was doing to revise working I thought hard, having, working smart. yeah and I thought having all these textbooks piled on my desk all highlighted with post-it notes was helping me revise but it wasn't because I wasn't recalling any of that information which is why I, I got good results but if I'd have had those strategies been taught been me better. and I knew how to revise effectively and start, from year seven from year seven onwards then my results would have been so yeah just reflect on my life as a student yeah and I just want to make sure that those those gaps aren't oh. there for the students here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just want to see them do well, don't you? So yeah. anything that you can do to help a student do better. Makes then, sense. It, yeah. What are you excited about going forward then? Like what's the next steps? Um, well, I think I'm apply well, I'm applying to a um, talk at Research Ed about cool. this whole programme. So Amazing. that's talk about stepping out of comfort zones but <laughs> that's one thing just pretend you're talking to. to us yeah um, and then just moving forward with the tutor program I'd like to 
within the next year have booklets that go along with every year groups tutor yeah, program as well really useful. Um, so that again we've I've done it with year 11 that's just launched this week to prepare them for the knock mocks in November um, but to have one that goes with each year group um, and they can keep over the years so I, th I think that's going to be my next exciting yeah that sounds really really good it's not something that happens overnight but it's something yeah. that, I'm, that I'm working on so. perfect yes. is there anything that you could recommend to us like any people we could give a follow to or any research that you've read that we that might help us understand this topic even more what would you recommend um, I definitely recommend Kate Jones Kate, so Jones. Kate Jones has three books out on retrieval practice um, one book specifically on retrieval strategies that yep. you can use in the classroom. Um, the Inner Drive website has so many resources on there for students and that's where a lot of my research has come from in terms of my revision programme um, based on how students learn and effective strategies and techniques. So Inner Drive and Kate Jones are definitely worth, worth a follow there. Um, and just just get yourself on Twitter yeah. and just follow, follow, share. follow, share. Oh gosh, I shared something this weekend and it absolutely blew up. Kicked out. Yeah. 119k views. 119,000. On retrieval stuff? Um, on my year 11 programme. Oh my god. That I posted. Um, yeah, my blog is. And I've shared that now and there's schools all over the, the country now that are going to be using that resource so that I think not only am I helping students at Beckfoot, I'm helping yeah. students everywhere, which. It's really, really it even nice. more worth it. Oh, um, and thank you so for talking yeah, to us. Get yourself on Twitter today. and follow, and you just scroll in, and it's a lot more purposeful than scrolling on Instagram, Instagram and TikTok, <laughs> which I like to do. Every time I know, you get sucked in, you get though. sucked in, but you're getting sucked into something that it's going to have a wider is, impact. Is, yeah. And you'll just like the Pomodoro effect. I just saw that within a couple of minutes, and now it's now it's going to be part, part of, part of it. So. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank it's been you. lovely to thank chat and me. get up to speed with it, yeah. and hopefully it'll um, help people just Absolutely. pick up a few tips going on how we can use it in our classroom. So thank you so so much. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll chat next time about another fab topic. Have a lovely day, everyone.